What up? Wednesday training session today is today is the 28th of February 2024. Here's what we got on the agenda for today. Um, we'll go through our warm up and I believe I have some depth jumps to do uh, during that. Then we're going to go through some muscle snatches. I don't know how heavy I'm going with those today. I don't think too awful heavy. Um, consider that just like an extended warm up and just an exercise that I want to try to get better at. I have I haven't ever done too much muscle snatching. And then we're going to get into squats and Romanian deadlifts. Wednesday is a day where I don't focus too heavily on Olympic lifts. That's pro also partly why I'm doing the muscle snatch on today because I want Wednesday to be more about um, allocating good volume towards squatting and hinging. And if you do a, a really heavy, you know, intense Olympic lifting uh, exercise before that, then those tend to get um, lessen in terms of the intensity that you can devote towards them. So that's the reasoning behind all that. Let's try to keep any ramblings today on the topic of flow state. So anything that I talk about today, hopefully in between sets, will be on the topic of flow. I'll probably get off topic a little bit, which is ironic because we're talking about flow. Um, and flow is like all about being focused on one thing, but that is the goal for the day. All right, let's have a good session. You can't be soft all your life, Coach D. Or how he would say it, you can't be soft all your life. Thanks, Coach. All right, before we really get into the session for the day, comment below something that you have found out about yourself recently. Whether it be just through a little bit of introspection, maybe it was an aha moment, right? A growth moment. Maybe someone told you something that you didn't know about yourself. Comment something that you recently learned about yourself that you were going to use as a means for growth. On the topic of flow state, before we like even really get into it, the speed bag is one of the greatest ways just to just like get your mind going in that direction of flow because it's so absorbing, right? All you're focused on is hitting this bag over and over again, and it like drowns out every possible other thing that you could pay attention to. So this is a great way to get that started. Not only warming up the body, but also the mind. Oh, hands are feeling good today. It's gonna be a good day. Wow, dude, you're so cool. Wow. Wow, what a loser. Probably best to start with like how I would define flow or how I experience flow. <clears throat> and I would state it as like this almost out of body experience where you aren't necessarily in control of your actions. It feels as though you're being guided along whatever activity that you are participating in. And so it's like, it's experiencing focus in such a way where like, usually you have to consciously think about focusing and it's like up to you whether you focus or not, but it's taking focus to the point where focus just kind of takes care of itself and you're along for the ride almost. At least that's how I've experienced flow in its most intense states. That's like the highest degree of the spectrum, but there's also like levels of flow reaching up to that state. And that state right there is something that I've only ever experienced like literally maybe a handful of times, right? So that's not, that's not the general state of flow that you will probably reach in the majority of your training sessions or whatever sporting activity you're doing. And it's probably not one that you want to be in either all the time. It's like, it's very consuming in a weird state to be in. Here's a good flow drill for you, if this is what you want to call that. I'm going to stand on one leg and I'm just going to try to balance while also just putting myself in random positions, all right? I'm going to do that for each leg, like 30 seconds for each. <clears throat> so if we, if that was the most intense display of flow that I've ever experienced, what I just talked about, then I would say like generally the flow state you're going to reach is just like a conscious effort 
to actively participate in whatever you're doing in trying to avoid distraction. Right? I better look crazy doing this right now. Like you're probably thinking, what is this guy doing? I promise. There's a there's a method behind the madness. Or is there? Am I just crazy? I don't know. Probably a little bit of both. Alright. Low level of flow is just like saying to yourself, okay, I'm gonna do this thing and I might not have full attention, there might be some distractions, but even re like regardless of those distractions, I'm still gonna participate in this activity and like just do the best I can with my attention. That's just like a base level of flow that you should be able to reach in any training session you're doing, right? If you can't like consciously commit to something like that, then um, I think your sessions will be lacking something uh, until, you, until you commit to really like having that threshold of attention on your session. And like ironically, here I am trying to talk about flow and do something else at the same time. Uh, if you really want to get into a flow state, part of that is limiting the amount of attention you're paying to other things outside of the activity that you're doing, right? So if I want to stand on one leg and work in different positions, whatever this goofy drill is I'm doing, that, that, should probably, that should probably be the only thing that I'm doing. If I'm trying to articulate flow and do that at the same time, the bandwidth of my, of my brain power is spread way too thin, right? So I need to only devote all of that energy to one thing. So let's try this drill again without talking. Okay, try that. Already feel a lot more balanced. So a lot of it probably has to do with the reality that you are only capable of so much at one time. You can only handle so much information. And I'm not gonna sit here and try to explain to you like if like I know what the depth of that information is. Like I've heard it quantified in like eight pieces of information at once, but like what does information even mean? Like per second, like what you're able to consciously perceive. I don't know what any of that means. But I do know that that is like true in some sense. So like, as I'm doing this stretch, I can definitely try to talk about flow a little bit better than I was doing in that mobility drill because this stretch isn't as demanding in terms of my attention and the energy that it requires. But like still, I know that I'm not getting as good of a stretch as I would be if I were to just shut up and just try to experience this stretch for what it is. Now ramble on about flow while I'm doing it. For real though, this is one of my favorite stretches you can ever do for like nearly every part of your body. Especially if you just learn how to relax and kind of sink into it. It'll let your spine to kind of like melt towards the floor. Absolutely amazing. This has been one of my favorite stretches as of late finding like something you can put both your hands on and then just do some supported sissy squats trying to push my knees forward touch the ground just bend as much as i can backwards <clears throat> right so like i can talk to you pretty much during all the stuff that i just did but i'm about to get into jumping and do some depth jumps off a chair and like i don't want to talk to you while i'm doing that because it requires more of my attention the things that I'm doing are demanding more and more of not only my body, but my mind. And like, if I want to do them successfully, I need to put as much attention as I can on these activities and less on anything else, especially trying to articulate what it is that I'm trying to do. I have zero ups. I mean, that's embarrassing. Is that all you got, big dog? Ooh. All right, I've got on my only shoes now and I'm uh, gonna start getting into the uh, exercises for the day, starting off with muscle snatches. 
want to stop talking about flow because it's hard to talk about the thing that you're trying to get into when the thing requires that you like aren't aware of it so that you can actually get into it. It's this weird sort of like abstract thing, right? Flow state. And it doesn't make a whole lot of logical sense. It really doesn't. Um, so like in between sets, let's talk about ways that you can potentially improve your ability to get into flow and um, things that you should avoid uh, if you want to get into better flow states and also things you should do outside of your training sessions uh, to help you improve your ability to get into flow. So let's, let's migrate the conversation towards that kind of stuff. Nod to the gods. Alright, so I think the first thing that needs to be addressed when talking about ways that you can potentially improve flow is understanding that the brain is extremely plastic, meaning that it can continue to develop and be influenced by stimuli even after uh, the brain is done developing in terms of like a physical age. I read the book uh, Mindset by Carol Dweck a long time ago, and forgive me if I got the author's name wrong, but like that book is just like a, an exposition of everything that I just said. It just goes into detail about how um, about how plastic the brain is and how it can continue to develop and improve. And so I say all that to say like, I think you should go into your training sessions with an understanding that like your ability to improve flow can actually happen. Like that's a reality. Like it's a skill that you can develop much like the skill of squatting or power cleaning or whatever. Um, so if you feel like it doesn't make any sense now and uh, that you feel like you aren't making any progress in flow, like understand that it will get better if you continue to put effort into it just like anything else. Squits! We got three sets of six here. Um, considering this like, uh, if you watch the first training vlog video, this is like the first week of a program. And so uh, generally don't want to like send it on the first week. Um, so I'm just going to build up to like at seven RPE and probably will undershoot that and just kind of get in some buttery squat reps uh, for three sets of six. So 18 total reps. Check that math. Yep. That's good. Times tables. No, I didn't start with two plates. Surely you don't want me to bore you with every warm-up set, right? I didn't realize how close to the camera I was getting there. This wide-angle lens is trippy. Isn't it weird how like literally anybody now can just go buy a camera that's like professional grade? And just upload stuff on YouTube? That's crazy. Like me, I'm an idiot. What am I doing? I don't even know. I truly have no idea. I just feel an urge to do it, you know what I'm saying? All right, continuing the discussion on flow, let's think about ways that we can limit distractions towards flow because like flow is probably just as much just as much about as like um, controlling your attention and like realizing that you are the arbiter of your of your attention as it is limiting distractions and like realizing that you have some control over your external environment. Number one, the gym environment that you work out in. Like what kind of gym is it? Are you at a public gym where it's just like almost chaos and like there's people everywhere? and people are doing different things. Maybe some people don't necessarily know what they're doing and that's fine, but that could be distracting like in terms of etiquette, you know, like maybe you're working out in a rack and someone comes near your rack while you're squatting and like picks up a weight and like just doesn't really understand that they're not supposed to do that and they're ignorant to that. Like that's a distraction. And that goes hand in hand with the people around you. Like if you're working out with people, right? Let's say you, you're working out with training partners or your training partners conducive to a flow state. 
You know, are they going to be distractions? Are they just as focused as you are, or are they are they there for other reasons, right? Are they there to like <clears throat> try to have a good time, or are they there to get better and, and like actually put their nose down and do some work? Okay, and then the big one, the obvious one is cell phones. Cell phones are the biggest distraction and the biggest potential detractor from a flow state. And uh, so I have a rule for myself. I don't allow myself to get on any social media while I am working out. And that's not, that's not because I'm gonna be Mr. Discipline and uh, oh, look at me and look at how motivated and determined I am. Like it's not that, it is it's a realization and acknowledgement of how powerful our cell phones are, right? Like I could go over there and just look at my cell phone right now and just look at the notifications and I'll have maybe a notification from Snapchat or a text from a friend or a notification from Instagram and, or YouTube and I can open up any one of those platforms and then go down a rabbit hole because the information that is presented to me is somewhat under my control, right? Like I can control my algorithm, but like, whatever pops up might detract or distract me to the point where like I have to go investigate that thing even further you know and then I start scrolling then 10 minutes goes by and I don't even realize it so it's not because I don't think um, it's not because I think that like cell phone usage is bad necessarily it's because I recognize how um, absorbing and consuming it can be on your flow state and like you know, if you get lost for 10 minutes, you're probably not going to get that flow state back, right? So that's my biggest rule is no cell phone, um, at least no uh, social media. Don't scroll at all while you're working out. sets of six of these from a small deficit and finally just thinking of ways to set yourself up so that you're giving your body your mind uh, every opportunity to most like easily enter a flow state number one uh, sleep I don't want to harp on that too much all right like I think we all understand how important it is to get seven, eight hours of sleep. And you could definitely dive down several rabbit holes in terms of like the mechanisms behind why that's so important. Also nutrition, that one's obvious as well. And especially uh, micronutrients, vitamins and minerals, I don't know how I don't know how much um, like additional supplementation after um, getting in like the recommended daily allowance per day. Like I don't know how much 
that additional supplementation will help you if you have a pretty good diet in terms of like cognitive benefit. But I think it's pretty clear that like if you are potentially um, deficient in a micronutrient, then that could definitely affect uh, your cognitive performance uh, in a negative way. <clears throat> so I don't know, maybe maybe take a multivitamin, making sure you're eating a, a, a pretty wide diet um, consisting of a lot of different foods, you know, so that way you're uh, getting in as much micronutrients as you can. And then finally, I would give you, I would give your um, mind the opportunity to try to get into a flow state without physical activity. So you can kind of experience what it's like um, to just like be in a flow state because your mind is not, because your mind is concentrated um, regardless of whatever your body's doing. And the best uh, example I can think of that is reading. Right? You are completely inactive physically when you're reading pretty much, right? And um, it's just an exercise in like concentrating your brain on this one thing. It's probably the best example of that. So try reading more. And then once you get lost in a book, like maybe try reading uh, like a, a fiction story, a novel, one where it's not like science-based or you're trying to learn something, rather you're just trying to like visualize a story. Try doing something like that. And maybe, I'm just brainstorming here, I don't know, the length to which you can visualize that story without any interruption is a reflection of uh, how strong your flow state might be. I don't know, that's just an idea. Don't quote me on that. All right, so this is a fun one, GHD, like circuit. All I'm gonna do is go like, what? I don't know, counterclockwise or clockwise, back extensions, then gonna do one side, then the other side, and then straight up crunches. So whichever way you want to work, counterclockwise, clockwise, I don't know, here we go. I do know one thing for sure, is that the flow state is a real phenomenon and that you can definitely get better at it. As long as you just try, you don't need someone to tell you how to do it. You don't need a coach to tell you how to do it. You just need to be aware of it and just consciously try to improve at it. Training is fun. <laughs>